and we'll get the recording. So uh, welcome to this the first webinar in this module. I hope you enjoyed yesterday um, and found it useful. It's going to be a very sort of small um, group of you. At most it's going to be four I think. Um, so there's yourself, Bonnie Tromans from from Derriford, uh, Rachel Stanya, who's a member of uh, staff. I forget which school you're in, Rachel. Are you in health professions? Um, uh, Zoe, um, what's her name? Zoe, I forget. Um, I'm just going to go back to the chat room. Um, Zoe, I can't remember where Zoe's from. And then there's um, probably Josephine. Um, it would be the fourth member of the module. There may be some other people. Ah, Rachel's, Rachel, you're logged into the, um, the chat room, I see. Great. Um, Z Bonnie, I don't know if you want to see, see and get into that. Is Bonnie, you have to open up another web browser. So onto your Internet Explorer or, or Chrome, whatever, open up another window, and in that window, type this address there, http colon two slashes hes dot plymouth dot ac dot uk forward slash chat forward slash and that will take you to something that looks like this and you'll see there that that, um, that Rachel and I are both in there oh, you're in you're in midwifery yes yeah, sorry about that Rachel I couldn't remember where you were um, so uh, Bonnie we're waiting for you Um, to see if you can get into that. So, if you can't get into it, um, just um, you could email. I'm just looking at, as I say, what you're seeing is everything that I see on my desktop. So, when I, I have a quick look at my email, just to see if you're, you know, someone's there sending me an email. If necessary, you can you can mobile phone me um, if you're having any problems. Um, well, I think I think I'll, I will sort of sort of carry on with the rest of this uh, this content. Um, so what you've got on your um, on your right hand side is 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 you've got um, well. First of all, you, 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 I'm hoping that you get in that chat room. Uh, Rachel's there, but. Um, um, and you should get this chat room so that you see a list of names on the right hand side and you should be able to type in your comments at the bottom um, maybe you can have a go at this after after the uh, after the web chat uh, after the webinar Bonnie if you're, you're not able to get there at the moment um, there is a question and answer thing on the go to webinar screen but I, I prefer not to use that because I prefer to keep everything into the chat room um, because that's where others are paying more attention. So you can talk to each other even if you're not listening to me. Um, so I'm going to just go into that chat room again, just one last look at it. And um, okay, I'll, Mike, Rachel, you want to try your microphone? So I'm going to give you one more chance, Rachel. Okay, so you're unmuted. You want to try talking? No, I'm not. I'm not hearing anything. So, it doesn't look like your microphone's working. So we'll stick with the typed, the typed chat. Bo Bonnie's microphone works okay, but she's got a very noisy background. Um, she's in the, in the middle of the A and E department, by the sounds of it. Um, so, um, we'll just carry on using typed chat. Um, using that webinar. Okay, that's Rachel. Um, but there's just one more one more look to see if Bonnie's there. No, never mind. I'll, I'll carry on talking and just go through some of the content and, and we'll see how we get on with the um, with communicating with the two of you. Um, so I was going to stop at this point and get you to talk to, to each other in the chat room, um, but as there's only Rachel in there, uh, it's a bit difficult. Um, I am recording this already and I'll put the link to the recording on the module portal on Tulip. Um, I hope that you've both uh, been able to get on to Tulip um, and see everything on there. I'm just going to unmute you a minute, Bonnie, so that you can re respond. 
So, one of you, have you been able to get off the tulip? I can still hear you, yeah, yeah, I can still hear you. I'm not on tulip yet now. Okay, right, well, um, let me know if you have any problems getting on there, because we need to get you on there. I know, I know that Rachel's on, so I'm going to carry on now. I'm, I'm, I'm muting you again, because you're, you're quite noisy. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, But oh, hang on, I'm just going to. I'm just going to unmute, I'm just unmuting you again, Bonnie. Have you tried, get, Bonnie? Have you tried getting onto this? Um, opening up another chat room. I think I'm in a chat room. I'm talking to somebody called Rachel. Oh yeah, that's yeah. it. Great. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Going to close that down yep that's it you're there great brilliant okay so you're both uh, uh, and that's just it's only the three of us today Rachel Bonnie and myself so um, why don't we just have a go at using the chat room for a minute uh, in the way that you might want to use it and you can you can use this chat room is there is there permanently you can open this up at any time so for example if you wanted to have a chat with Rachel about something on the course um, discuss something you could say, why don't we go into the chat room? You could both op open up the chat room. Um, you've got no visual of what I'm doing. Um, you can hear me though, can you, Bonnie? Are you not seeing? Are you not seeing the chat room? Are you not seeing what you, actually those words? Yeah. Okay. So, so what what you're um, what you're seeing is my version of the chat room. So, oh, I see. Yeah. When when you've got it's because you've got two windows on on your on your computer. So when you when you go into the chat room, um, the the visual from the webinar goes behind your window. So if you if you minimise that window, for example, you'll you'll you should then find the the go to webinar window behind it. Oh, you've lost all visuals. Okay, right. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll carry on if you can still hear me there. Um, I'm going to close a few, a few of my own windows down here a bit. Give it a bit more space. One of the things that you you would find with any computer is that if you've got a lot of windows open, email, lots of other things happening, um, you'll find that um, it slows the computer down and you don't get as much um, response. I'm actually closing some of my own stuff down here. I've got a million, a million windows opened up behind. So you, you should you should be seeing at the moment you should be seeing my screen, which is currently just a blue, a blue thing with my, with my talking head appearing in the middle of it. Um, and now I'm going to put the chat room back up again to see if you're seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, yes. The, the, so the reason. When you're when you're looking at the chat room, at this bit here, this is the chat room. When you're looking at this, it covers up the webinar. So, um, so you'll still hear me. But you won't be seeing my screen because it'll be, it'll be covered by the chat room. The webinar screen, go to webinar, will be covered by the chat room. So you'll have to sort of listen to me to say, OK, come back into the webinar to see what we're doing. So let's um, hopefully see if you can do that Do that now. So if you if you minimize your the chat room or change your, I mean, hit, um, for example, I'm showing if you can see it now, um, I'm showing you what, what I'm seeing on my screen. But you should be able to see the chat room as it appears on my screen. And now going back into the webinar. So I'm now going to go back to the PowerPoint. And hopefully you're now looking at the PowerPoint. And I'm going to sort of carry on for a bit. So it's now, it's now quarter past four. So I think I need to try and move on a little bit. Um, I'm going to miss that one and go from from there, just to sort of try and 
um, remind you of what we're trying to do here. So um, once you get in, I know, I know that Rachel's been on the portal, and uh, Bonnie, once you get there, you'll find there's a number of attachments already uh, there in the, in the shared area, giving you sort of the learning objectives of the different different blocks within the the whole module. Um, so within my part of it, so if you think of the module as having like the six parts for the six people, so myself, Heather, um, Ruth, Bridie, Janet, Catherine, um, each of us have got like a, a little little part of the course and we've got uh, each got our own little little bit of learning objectives within the overall whole. The overall whole is to sort of think about those issues which will affect health and social care services in the future. So within my bit, um, I'm thinking about that this, and you should be able to see this on your screen now, um, the seven trends in information technologies that are changing health and social care. Um, only very briefly, we were a bit short of time yesterday, did we sort of discuss the ideas of equity and digital and other technology divides. You may remember I showed like a graph um, showing the idea of digital divisions from those people up one end um, that will be sort of quite advanced in using technologies down to those who aren't on the internet at all. Um, and we, I gave some examples yesterday of, of research looking at that type of um, illustrate the trends in technologies but also addressing technology, technological equity. Um, today I'm going to briefly talk about decision support and expert systems, social media and online therapies and then um, in the next webinar um, we'll be looking at patient access to records, e-health readiness and health promotion and then the final day-to-day face-to-face um, in March will be like a recap in a way of what we what we did yesterday. So um, just to remind you of what, what I think of the seven trends in information technologies at the moment, we've got electronic records decision support, um, mobile, patient-led and social media, sensors, telehealth, telecare, wearable technology, big data and robots. I wonder if there's any if you understand those words, okay, or, or if there's anything that you want to ask about those particular words. So, so I'm going to stop just there for a minute and go back into the chat room to see if you have any questions or comments about either about what was presented yesterday, about what we're doing just now, or about those words. So I'm going to give you a chance to uh, tell me how you're getting on. Okay. Okay, so so you're both happy with, with with yesterday. So so Bonnie, you're still not getting a visual. That that's because you're you're looking at the the chat room. I think if you were to go up to in, in your chat room, if you go up to the the minim, you know, to the top right hand corner and minimise your chat room. Um, I think you 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 should you can't you know, without losing me. Ah, you're um, because you're. You, you should have two windows open, you see, you should have um, one window which is my webinars and you should have one window which is the chat room and you should be able to even close the chat room down altogether and carry on um, seeing and hearing me. Do you want to have another go? Do you want to just, just, just try it, Bonnie? <laughs> have a go. So I'm going, what I'm going to do is to put you onto audio. Just bear with us, uh, Rachel. Just trying to get everybody uh, working here. Where are we? Attendees. So, okay, you're unmuted, Bonnie. Do you, are you still there? I can hear you. I can hear you still, Ray, and I'm, and I'm talking to Rachel by chat, but I cannot get your visual up, so just carry on, and I'll have to re, re um, access it another time. Okay, right. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll just carry on then, and and I'll try and um, 
explain everything that's on the screen so that you don't miss too much. Right. Um, so, um, so you're basically all happy with the these seven trends of information technologies. Um, so I'm going to carry on from that from that point. Um, the the next thing I was wanted to talk about was was un, under electronic records and decision support and talk about um, computer patient interviews, decision support, and expert systems. Um, so. Let's just think. Uh, you're in A and E and um, in mid in midwifery, so I'm pretty sure that there have been computer patient interviews in those areas. I know, I know that in that the computer patient interview has been uh, used in various emergency departments in in the states, um, and probably in um, midwifery as well. The idea of computer patient interviewing started in 1960s, uh, so quite a long time ago. Uh, with, a, with a paper by somebody called Warner Slack in USA uh, and it's been going on for a long time it's been going on for the that's now 50 years <laughs> incredible 50 years we've been doing computer patient interviewing but it's still not quite as widespread as you might expect it to be um, but there's plenty of scope for it so there, there's been various things I came from Glasgow and a, a colleague of mine there called Robin Neil Jones had developed a computer patient interview for um, dyspepsia, it was called GLADYS, the Glasgow Dyspepsia System, G-L-A-D-Y-S, Glasgow Dyspepsia, and that took signs and symptoms of people uh, who had um, the possible symptoms of dyspepsia, so you know, abdominal pain and so on, uh, and it it used it to make a prediction as, or make a, a suggestion as to whether this was possibly just dyspepsia or whether it might possibly be um, something more serious. Um, so it would be a series of questions, you know, do you have bloating, um, do you pass wind, um, uh, are your stools funny colour, things like that. And it would, depending on your answer, yes or no, the interview would branch off to other questions. And this, this idea of a branching quest, uh, questionnaire online, where you can have thousands and thousands of questions, but of course you only go down one particular path, is, is become quite mainstream in the USA and uh, if you um, once you get onto the portal you'll find I'm, I haven't put it up there yet but I'm going to put up a, a, a series of links other things that you can look at and read um, there's, a, there's a link to a, a one of the previous webinars that we've done of a man called Alan Wenner uh, in fact if you search after this you could search for Alan Wenner A-L-L-E-N Wenner and um, Plymouth webinar computer taken patient histories you'll probably find it anyway it's on the University of Plymouth website and and he explains how this system called instant medical history is now being used quite um, quite widely within general practice in in the states um, currently our, ourselves we've, we've got a proposal to develop an allergy interview which um, comes a lot uh, further developed something that we did in developing allergy pathway so we've developed an allergy pathway which is now a map of medicine, um, but we're developing that further, so more detailed, so it becomes a patient tool, and patients can answer the questions, and that will help people in in the, in the triage of um, the triage of people with suspected allergy uh, as to whether they need a referral onto the allergy clinic at Derriford. Um, so this, this has worked with um, I don't know if you know the allergy clinic in Derriford uh, Bonnie uh, it was Ed Kaminsky he's just retired now but um, we're still working with Ed um, so this was a system which was supported map of medicine I don't know if you're both familiar with map of medicine um, map of medicine is something that um, particularly GPs use quite a lot um, where it gives them a path it gives them pathways for different patient groups and uh, helps support their decision making um, so it's this idea of decision support um, if either of you want to look, we've we've got a, actually a website called the Peninsula Allergy Service website, uh, which has got where some of the map of medicine pathways are available for GPs, and there's also a website for discussion forums uh, for um, patients and professionals. So um, if you can see this, Rachel and um, Bonnie, you'll get it in the recording afterwards. If you can't find it now, uh, it just shows you the sorts of um, flow chart that you might have so you have a question 
Does the patient only present with an itchy mouth or throat after eating food? Yes, you go down the path on the left-hand side. No, you go down the path on the right-hand side. So no, does the patient present predominantly with gastrointestinal systems? And then yes and no, and so on. You, I'm sure you get the idea. Uh, and that sort of decision support um, can be done for a variety of areas. And I, I know that it's been done um, in, uh, in emergency departments as well as, uh, I'm pretty sure, in midwifery. So patients with suspected allergy were going to be asked by their GPs to answer the online interview at home. The computer will then summarize those presenting symptoms and give a provisional view on whether a referral is needed. Because at the moment, these referral letters are going to um, tracks at for Dereford and um, darts for Devon and so on, these, these um, the referral centers. Uh, and, and if someone's actually scanning them themselves, but we can get a computer to do some of that for them. And then details can be printed with educational information um, for the patient and also email back to the GP. So that's, that's what one of the things that we're trying to do. So in the chat room, um, let's talk about this now. I'll, um, and if you can see this, Rachel, and I'll read it to you, Bonnie. Um, what do you see as the main barriers to implementing this type of decision support in, in your area? If you were to do... Um, some sort of patient history taking in midwifery or patient history taking by computer in accidents emergency, what do you think would be the main barriers and are there any pathways that you can think of that might be usefully developed into a computer interview? So I'm going to stop talking a minute and I'm going to go back into the chat room to see what you're saying. So the question is, um, do you see possible use of computer taken histories in your clinical area? Yeah. Okay, Bonnie. So, that's Bonnie. So, that would you would you mean in um, in general practice? All right. So, Rachel, do you think that um, they would be more or less honest with a computer? Certainly, the people in the, in the past have found that with, say, for example, alcohol histories, um, people actually are more willing to disclose things to a computer than maybe to uh, to their GP. When you, uh, Bonnie, when you say um, remote areas will struggle, is that remote areas will struggle for internet access, you mean, or, um, because I mean, what we're hoping here is that people might be able to answer computer history taking at home and then get a, a more directed and better referral where the referral summarizes their clinical history to date. Okay. I'll see if I can um, after after we finish. Uh, I'll um, I'll see if I can find the particular um, papers that may relate to computer patient history taking in in your areas. In fact, in, at A and &E, I, I did think that this would be quite a good project to try in in A and &E. I, I came and talked to um, uh, Jason Jason Smith. Is it? I can't remember one of your consultants there. Um, about the possibility, and uh, it'd be quite a project that I'd, I'd quite like to do, really. Jason Smith, yeah. Okay, um, I'll I'll carry on back to my PowerPoint now. Um, so we want we wonder um, wonder if either of you heard of this thing called IBM Watson. Um, I mean, when you, when you think about most contacts with clinicians, they are 
or many many contact with clinicians are you know, one of the fundamental parts of it is is a history taking and diagnosis. Um, I mean, obviously, um, perhaps it's it varies from the, the the place and the type of contact in 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 A and E. You've probably got much more practical work to do in terms of um, X-rays and mending broken bones and and dealing with uh, wounds and so on. I um, mean, in in midwifery, of course, you you know you you've got the practical side of the getting up to delivery, but there's, there is quite a lot of what you do will be history taking, and, and in some things more like um, mental health, for example, clearly me uh, history taking can be a uh, quite a major part of it. In things like allergy, actually, uh, it's quite a good because taking a good history is really crucial to getting the good diagnosis. Um, so what we've been talking about so far is that structured idea of taking like a sort of yes no have you got this and then it determines what the next question is. What of course human beings do as opposed to computers is they, they tend to sort of jump jump stages and you jump further on uh, because you know you can you can guess really what some of the answers might be and if not you can always come back. Uh, so you, you do it in a more not necessarily such an automated sort of uh, robot like way of doing things and um, one of the things that people are trying to get computers to do is to be uh, much more, much smarter, uh, and to do things using what's called artificial intelligence, that sort of fuzzy logic. And I don't know if any of you have um, heard about IBM's Watson. I'm going to, um, you, won't, you may not have seen it yet, but you can always um, Google IBM Watson after this and have a read of some of the things to do with, with IBM Watson. This is a, a, a computer that they've got to play, they've got it playing chess and they've got it starting to do diagnosis. So we're getting really large computing power um, able to start doing sort of really quite difficult, what you might think of as being a human intelligence type of tasks. Um, but it, 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 it becomes much more flexible. I, I think one of the things we will see over the next um, 10 years is, is an increasing uh, use of this sort of expert system approach. Expert systems have been coming around for, for quite a while, they haven't really taken off, but I think computing has now got to stage. I mean Watson has beaten people at chess, some of the grandmasters have beaten them at chess, and it's doing some, some aspects of medical diagnosis as well. Um, I'm now showing um, so Rachel will be seeing this, but um, I'm now just showing a, one of the screens from, from Watson. Um, but you can Google this afterwards and, uh, and follow it up. So moving on to the another one of the seven trends in information technology, I'm going to talk briefly now about patient-led um, innovations and, and the use of social media. Um, and I present, I just put this up a bit yesterday, so uh, where I talked about a website called Patients Like Me, and if you haven't looked at it, you might uh, follow this up by having a look at Patients Like Me, and also maybe if you're not on the Twitter yet, um, it might be good if you can get onto Twitter and then you can have a look to see the sorts of things that people on Twitter do. Um, Ninja Betic certainly, you know, she's got loads of followers and she's just a typical uh, young person with diabetes who and they're discussing their um, diabetes, so she's got um, she's got sort of two and a half thousand followers when I grabbed that screen. Um, so you know, here's a here's a conversation between Ninja Betic and and some of the others. Or hey, ninjas, Haley has a question about her pump. Can anyone help her with some advice? Thanks. And then um, you know, presumably a bit later on, um, somebody comes back with some information about about pumps. And somebody else and they sort of just chat generally putting in stuff about their own lives but also things about their diabetes um, so um, one of the things that we did um, with Ninjabetic was we we got her to ask some of her followers about which apps and which sites they used in relation to their diabetes what they liked about those apps and sites and what they didn't like and uh, and we asked in particular if, if they, as young people with diabetes, were to tell their diabetic uh, specialist nurse one thing about diabetes app sites, what was it? And so we used that, and within, a, within sort of two or three weeks, we were able to get uh, do a survey of young people with diabetes uh, and find out what they were doing, what they were using. So uh, again, 
um, Bonnie's not seeing this, Rachel is hopefully. Um, some of the sites they were using, they were using sites for blood glucose recording, sites for nutrition, for peer communication and support, sport and exercise, general information. And then actually there were some sites they weren't really using, but we added them on as other things they could be using. They could be using the GP websites. So some uh, GPs do offer access to your own records. They offer repeat prescriptions. There are sites with psychological support. And uh, the actual competition that we ran uh, was preparation for the consultation. Um, so I'm now showing a screen called My Diabetes My Way. This is a, a, a screen from Scotland where uh, all people in Scotland have now got access to their own medical record. Uh, all people in Scotland with diabetes have got access to their own medical record via this website and it integrates information both from the hospital and from general practice. Um, shame it's not got taken off yet in, in England. Moving on to um, one of the other things that patients have got, psychological support. There's various sites around such as Living Life to the Full, Mood Gym, um, these are both sites for people with um, depression. And in this competition that we ran, these teams developed various apps for mobiles or websites. Um, and I'm showing them on the screen now. Diabetes Logger, Insulin Calc, Diabetes Health Tracker, CP Slider, those are for calculating insulin doses, You and Your Diabetes, and Tinder, which were things to develop a list, an agenda for taking into the consultation. So that's the sort of thing um, that they developed. I'm just going to go back into the chat room, just check that you're both okay. So um, just, um, yeah, great. So okay, so I'm seeing, I'm now looking to see what you're putting in the chat room. And Rachel's talking about the booking history. And Bonnie's replying. Okay, so hopefully you're both okay and you're still both with me. Um, do, you want, do you want to just say some, put, type something in the chat room just to sort of, do I carry on? Everything all right so far? Right, okay, good. Um, so I'm back on to um, my slides again. Um, and another project that I brief, very briefly mentioned yesterday was one called Sharp Talk. This was uh, a project for young people who self-harm and uh, our aim was to get young people who self-harm and mental health professionals together online to see how well they could communicate with each other about self-harm and its management. Um, we recruited 77 young people um, aged 16 to 25 and 18 uh, recently qualified health professionals and we allocated them to three discussion forums. I don't know if you either of you take part in discussion forums, but um, uh, there, are, there, are just, there are thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of discussion forums out there on different topics, many of which are in health. We ran a, a closed for, free closed forums for the people in this particular project. And uh, the young people who took part um, liked the, the small and supportive community that was there and, and they, they chatted, they, had, they played games online, but they also supported each other as well as discussing the sort of more formal issues that we, we introduced every now and then to debate, to get their views about how services should be delivered. Um, but they, they used it extensively to support each other and interacted with the research team. One of the, the crucial issues for these young people who self-harm was that they were anonymous in this um, in these discussion forums. They were anonymous to each other. Um, they, the only contact we had with them was through an email address, most of which were generally fairly anonymous email addresses on Hotmail or, or, or Gmail. Um, they weren't, it wasn't Ray really Jones at Plymouth.ac.uk, so, but, um, you know, um, Forensic Gmail. Um, so we don't know who they were. Um, but, they, we built up a picture of who they were by their discussion, but we didn't know who they were in, in real life. The health professionals in this project, um, despite registering, didn't really take part actively, and um, they reported barriers such as lack of confidence and concerns in using this sort of format of talking with their with with these clients, with these service users, but also perhaps there was a, a lack of clarity as to what their role was 
in the project. We um, so we, we concluded that although this anonymous online environment was used greatly by the young people, it was too unstructured for health professionals. So as a result of that, we carried on to another project called Stakeholders Online, where we ran one-week courses in which um, mental health professionals and service users over, over a sort of more, slightly more structured period of one week with a beginning webinar, discussion forum, and an end webinar, um, were participating online together again, and on, they were all anonymous. So, and this was very important for um, because professionals were able to as well admit that they didn't know about things online, as well as the service users being able to um, say things which they might feel critical about the service, uh, perhaps uh, which they might not like to say face to face with professionals. So, in this sort of circumstance, the anonymity was very useful. I don't know if you've been um, watching on the news this, this stuff about, um, I can't remember her name, the, um, the woman who was promoting um, the Jane Austen for the banknote and, and the terrible um, anonymous trolling that went on on Twitter. Uh, so this, the anonymity online has a, clearly has a, you know, a downside, but it does have a positive side as well if, if you've got it in a controlled environment such as on a project like this. Um, so you know, anonymity can be a good thing as well as being a, um, a cover for trolls and uh, it's one of the things that we have to put up with really on the internet. Um, so um, I'm going to type this into the chat room as, as well in a minute. Um, let me copy it and put it into the chat room which is I'm asking for a question. What do you think is a way forward for using social media in health services? taking into account the findings about anonymity in sharp talk and stakeholders online, but also the use of patients like me and Twitter. I'll copy that and put it into the chat room. There we are. So we're into the chat room now. What do you think? Are, are either of you social media users? Do you use social media at all? Yes, I, I think that, that's... Um, that's important, Rachel. I mean, that, that these these sites that we we had with um, the Sharp Talk project, where they were closed sites, so um, people had to sort of register to go in and use them. I mean, the, the, what we see with um, with Twitter is that that any, anybody can open as many accounts on that as you like. I mean, I've got I've got about five Twitter accounts, some for different projects, one for what, and my main general one for work, and I have one for my my home tweeting. <laughs> Um, all my accounts, uh, all my Twitter accounts are uh, are clear who who is the owner. Even my home one, you know, I, I have a a different name, but I, I I say that it's me underneath. Yeah, I I I think you know if um if you haven't got onto Twitter either of you, it would it'd be worth a while look at it. It's it's very Twitter is very easy to use, and although. Um, it's um, it's got its dark side. Um, it, it is it is quite useful for um, there's there's a thing called we nurses, for example. Uh, you might be interested in uh, where um, nurses they get together, they have a, a Twitter sort of evening where they all chat together about a particular issue, and, uh, and they find it really quite supportive. You you can use these things really as much or as little as you as you like. Um, I mean, what's I think interesting is whether or not the, the question of anonymity. I mean, I'm not sure how you'd feel about. Uh, personally, I I wouldn't like to disclose my whole patient medical history on patients like me. But there are there are thousands of people on there who've done that. I don't know if you've ever had a look. So 
So I think one of the things that um, professionals can do is that they could, I mean, for example, particularly with the follow-up of people with long-term conditions, I mean, you could imagine that um, um, Paddy English, I don't know if he does this yet, uh, his diabetes clinic at Derriford, could, could set up a closed forum for his own patients. Maybe, you know, maybe he might, say, set up a group of 20 or 30 young people with diabetes and get them to um, discuss their own issues. And he might drop into the chat room every now and then to see, um, to see what people are saying and to offer some sort of professional advice to them. Um, so I mean I think there are possibilities here. It's just a question of working out how best to use best to use it. Um, okay, I'll um, going to carry on with the um, with with my PowerPoint. Um, one of the other things that um, you, you you can find online is um, I haven't actually listed it as one of the seven trends because it's not especially new, um, but um, we do see things like CCBT, computerized cognitive behavioral therapy um, for depression in these sites such as Mood Gym and Living Life to the Full. Um, that type of psychological therapy is, is really quite well suited to the computer approach because it involves you know, trying to um, give people, teach people really how to control their thoughts better. Um, so that, that type of online therapy works well. There's been other online therapies for trying to reduce people's drinking and health promotion, and we'll come back to that a bit um, in the second webinar. Um, so we, we do, I've done some work with um, Living Life to the Full, looking at how well it's used across the country. Um, so if, Rachel, you can see this now, you, you'll see there's a map there and, you, and uh, with varying degrees of the use of this particular uh, online package. Now this is an online package which is available to the world so you think well there shouldn't actually be differences across the country because the difference there's no, there's no major difference in the rate of depression across the country so why is there a, a difference in the rate of the use of uh, an online therapy? And one of the advantages of online therapies of course is that they are they should be available across the country to those who've got the internet of course but there's not there's not really regional variations really in the use of the internet so when you see a regional variation like that map there it's because simply um, there's a lack of awareness in certain regions or professionals aren't recommending it so one of the things that I think we should see more of in the next few years is professionals recommending to go away and use this site or go away and look at that site particularly you know, helping helping patients find good sites and and we did a study um, looking at the use of Google Ads to raise awareness and, and found that it was actually quite um, quite useful. Um, I'm going to skip that actually because it's time's pressing on. I'm skipping my this current slide and oh no, that's the last one. I won't skip it then. I'll go back to it. Um, so um, what I was going to suggest um, that you might do over using the chat room um, and what I'll do is I'll put each of these questions up um, one by one in the chat room so that you can pick them up there even though you can't see this my screen Bonnie in a second so put the first one in that's strange Why is it saying that? I don't know why it's um, the chat rooms um, giving me strange things at the moment, doing strange things for me. That's better. Let's do it again. Um, Anyway, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk you through it, and I'll just type it out by hand. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, I was um, wondering, really, if uh, you could think about over the next uh, next few days using uh, Google uh, or Nice or others to find out what online therapies or patient education is being used, and if anything else you could find. Uh, and this this is this is really the end. This is what you would be doing for my the rest of my of my module. Let me just 
try this again. Let's see if I I'm gonna try it one more one more time. That's better. Right. So you might uh, this is like your homework if you like. Um, and um, we're hoping that um, Zoe and um, the other person, Josephine, um, I think, will join you. So there's four of you in the module. You can either come into this this um, this chat room to discuss it, or what I'll do is I will email email the four people with the email addresses that you find. What? Do, um, sorry, I'm burbling. Um, Bonnie, I know that you use your NHS email most. Rachel, you use you're fine with the Plymouth AC UK, I guess. Shall I? Um, send you both an email so that you know each other's emails because you might want to just discuss this briefly either by email or you could use um, or you could use this chat room to carry on um, discussing stuff okay um, so um, I mean, I'll, I'll just do that as, a, as an email email now actually uh, just hang on a second oh, no, I'll, I'll do it afterwards I'll do it afterwards um, but what, what I'm wanting you to do is to think about some of these issues and, and this is like your, your sort of homework for the rest of my little block and then you've got your next webinar with Catherine um, coming up in about maybe next week sometime. Um, let me just put this in here a minute. And What, what I was uh, hoping did, that you might do was, was between you produce a short summary um, and, and let me have, let me see if uh, I can do this. I might modify this a minute to be more suitable to being that there's any. Um, so as I agree amongst yourselves, that's what I was intending to do, there's only, there's only two of you. Uh, we need to see if we can get um, Zoe and um, the other person in to this discussion as well um, and then you can either meet online using this um, chat room, it's up to the two of you really or you can just do it by email um, where, you, where you go away look at the use of Google not, um, to, to think about online therapies and just produce a little summary of what, what, what you found Email is easier for you. Okay, is that okay with you, Rachel? You want to use email? Um, didn't actually say put that up. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll 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 just leave it up to the two of you. And what I'll do is I'll email um, Zoe and the other person whose name I've forgotten. And um, what I'm asking to do is between the the four of you. Uh, or it may be between the two of you if the others who don't sort of log into this um, but at least between the two of you have a quick look and produce at most one page half a page would do just the things that you find to do with online therapies and um, what you think their use might be uh, in particular areas so if you find they be useful so have a quick look through Google maybe look on on nice or some other databases spend some time on this just finding out what online therapies or patient education seems to be in use at the moment and um, produce sort of a short sort of statement, if you like, between the two of you as to what use you think this will be over the next few years. And then one of you can email it to me uh, by Tuesday midday and, and then I'll, I'll sort of respond and then that will be the end of this little block. And that's it really. So it's five to five already. Um, I'm going to sign off from here, so goodbye. And what I'll do is now I will email you both and email the four, the other two as well. And with, with what were your sort of homework, if you like, is for the, the rest of these next few days. So thanks a lot and, uh, and goodbye. Bye. Oh, Rachel, sorry, just picking up Rachel's... Um, uh, maybe sort of a, a, just a bit of both, and, and, and I think you're, you're right to pick out the difference between 
patient education and therapy. So maybe, um, I mean, what, what you might do is one of you might choose to do patient education and one might look at therapies. And then just, just a few notes on it. I'm not, not looking for a massive um, thesis or anything on this, just sort of a, a look at this and a think about it for over the next few days. Okay, I'll, I'll email you just now. Thanks then. Bye.